It's Game Boy World, and you are already dead. I'm going to be honest, I don't really get the appeal of Fist in the North Star. It's a brutal, violent, bloody, grim, and generally unpleasant manga and anime. It revolves around a sort of hyper-masculine level of posturing and violence that something like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure so adroitly satirizes, though really, Fist of the North Star is so over-the-top and self-serious, it practically feels like a self-parody of its own. Okay. But, like it or not, Fist of the North Star has the distinction of being one of the first manga and anime-based video games ever to see release in the US under its own name. Throughout the 80s, the few anime-based games to see localization into English invariably ended up being presented as something different. The most famous instance of this is probably the Laserdisc game Cliffhanger, which took animation directly from Hayao Miyazaki's brilliant loop on the third movie The Castle of Cagliostro, with no acknowledgement of the original source. Or something like Obake no Kyutaro, which lost its license in America to become Chubby Cherub. Or Dragon Power, the bizarre reworking of Dragon Ball for NES. In fact, this had even happened with Fist of the North Star, which made its debut in the US as the 1986 Sega Master System game Black Belt. But here on Game Boy, Fist of the North Star was allowed to let its anime freak lag fly. And it was super freaky indeed. Check out the game's full title. Fist of the North Star, 10 Big Brawls for the King of the Universe. That's a mouthful. Perhaps not coincidentally, 10 Big Brawls happened to show up in the US right around the time Viz Communications embarked on what would ultimately prove to be a short-lived adaptation of the Fist manga for the American market. This was kind of a thing for Viz around this time, it seems, tying manga and video game releases together. We'd already seen this happen on NES with the timing of a standalone comic of Golgo 13, The Impossible Hit, which coincided with the localization of top-secret episode Golgo 13 for NES. Later, a second volume, Hopper the Border, showed up at comic shops emblazoned with ads for the Mafak conspiracy. A few years after that, Ramna 1 Half Hard Battle would be allowed to keep its original identity on Super NES to tie in with the debut of Viz's US anime releases of Ranma 1 Half. The previous Ranma game had been released with massive changes under the name Street Combat, despite the existence of Ranma manga localizations in the US by that point. So basically, Ten Big Brawl's journey to the US happened at least in part to help promote the Fist of the North Star brand, as parent company Shueisha, which owned Viz, attempted to make it an international success. Admittedly, there probably was a certain amount of coincidence involved as well, because supporting the hyper-violent manga with a simple beat-em-up for a kids-oriented portable system is a pretty weird idea, even as far as manga adaptations in the 80s and early 90s go. Fist already had some presence in the US, as Ten Big Brawls was predated by a localization of one of the Famicom Fist of the North Star games for the NES, which came over simply as Fist of the North Star. In fact, it's entirely possible that Viz decided to bring Fist over in part because the brand already had some visibility in the US. In Japan, however, Fist of the North Star, Hokuto no Ken, was basically inescapable. The manga had run as a weekly serial from 1983 through 88, coinciding neatly with the rise of Japanese home consoles, and ultimately the Famicom saw no less than four games based on the series, with a number of titles appearing on other systems as well. So in that regard, the fact that Fist of the North Star would stand as Game Boy's first anime licensed game isn't terribly surprising. Besides being tremendously popular in Japan throughout the 80s, Fist also lent itself to video game format, perhaps better than any other anime property in existence. After all, Fist of the North Star consisted almost entirely of a glowering muscle dude named Kenshiro, traveling through a post-apocalyptic hell, taking on all sorts of villains with his bare fists, occasionally exploding their skulls into a bloody mess. Sometimes really big dudes would appear and pose a greater challenge. That simple, direct concept transfers perfectly into video game form. Walk right, punch guys, fight the big guys as bosses. Or, in the case of 10 Big Brawls, skip the walking and the mooks altogether. This isn't simply the first anime-based game on the Game Boy, it's also the system's first fighting game altogether. Of course, this being a two-button fighting game that debuted before Street Fighter 2, it's kind of... what's the word? Oh yes, it sucks. There are no combos here, no real special moves, and most fighters have seven moves altogether. Standing, crouching, and jumping variants for their A and B attacks, and also a charged attack. But many characters lack even that. The B button doesn't issue commands for everyone. The charged attack is really your only hope for making any progress at all through the story, since for most characters it has a fair amount of range. Getting in close to an enemy is the worst idea imaginable. Your attacks have zero range and weird timing, and the AI always seems to have priority. There are no knockbacks or stuns or anything, so anyone weaned on more recent fighting games, which is to say, even vaguely functional fighting games, will find themselves completely ill-equipped to make progress here. Your best tactic is to jump back and forth over enemies while charging up ranged attacks, which works until enemies start using their own projectiles, at which point good luck. Weirdly enough, there are signs all over this game that developer Shoei System wanted to make something more substantial than a mere brawler. Ten Big Brawls has a rudimentary experience system that allows you to level up, 
and power up your fighters and save progress with a password. Still, the single player mode is tedious, a grueling exercise in figuring out exploits for the game's AI. Slightly less awful are the multiplayer options, which at least put you at an equal disadvantage to your competitors. Multiplayer allows you to go one-on-one -on -one against another human, or put together a five-man team for a round-robin tournament. It's still awful, but Misery loves company. Unfortunately, I can't really show off multiplayer since one, that's impossible with the Super Game Boy that I'm using for recording this video, and two, I would never inflict this game on another person. The credits on Tin Big Brawls belong to developer Shoei System and publishers Toei Animation in Japan and Electrobrain in the US. From what I can deduce about Shoei System, they existed largely as the go-to contractor for Toei's efforts at video game publishing, toward the middle and end of Japan's concurrent economic and Famicom booms. Besides Ten Big Brawl, Shoei developed most or possibly all of the Famicom Fist of the North Star titles, along with a handful of games based on other Toei animation licenses such as their anime adaptation of Puss in Boots. As for Electrobrain, they were exclusively an American publisher. Interestingly, Ten Big Brawls appears to have been their first release ever. The NES Fist of the North Star, actually the second Famicom title based on the anime, came to the US courtesy of Taxan. Electrobrain brought over a handful of Toei properties at the beginning, but quickly diversified, though Game Boy was definitely their specialty for the first few years of their existence. We'll see more of them through this series, and thankfully with better games in tow. As for Ten Big Brawls, well, nobody involved went out of business from publishing this game, but on the other hand, it didn't exactly become a beloved classic in its own right, and Viz's attempts to localize the Fist of the North Star manga fizzled by the end of 1990. Where battles in Fist of the North Star always end in death, this one was more of a draw. How inappropriate. <laughs> Four more games that will make your head explode. Keep reading GameboyWorld.com. And please support this series on Patreon.